Apollo 10 now 2,700 miles from the moon. Yes, sir. Apollo 10, you know, you often heard of the uh, nursery rhyme about uh, the man in the moon. Uh, we didn't see one there. There was three men around the moon, and pretty soon we hope that there's uh, three men, probably will be two men on the moon, one circling, but uh, as far as seeing a man in the moon directly, we just didn't see it this time. Over. Okay, Tom, thank you. And we were looking, too. Yeah, Roger. If there were any people down there, they have a lot of rocks to play with. It won't be long now. It's new be defense page. You'll be there with a big red, white, blue American flag on it, though. So. Roger that. Uh, Houston, for just a quick break here, uh, we want to be able to show you as we're slowly, slowing down now as we lose, leave the moon. You've seen a, a fantastic sight. We want to just take you inside the cockpit, say hello for a minute, and then when we come back out, we should be able to see it, really get a better view of the moon there with respect to having a, um, a whole sphere of it. Okay, mighty fine. We're standing by, Tom. Okay, your picture's coming in uh, real good, real clear. Uh, hello, everybody. So, well, the view outside is fantastic. Inside here, you look like about three scroungy characters, but we really feel great. And it's been a fantastic trip. Over. Roger, Tom. You guys looking mighty good in there. Roger, you got any color on us in here? Roger that. The color's real good inside. <laughs> well, we feel great. We felt great ever since liftoff, and uh, it's been a fantastic voyage. <laughs> in just a minute, we'll uh, turn the uh, camera around and show you John. Over. Roger. Uh, who's winning the beer growing contest in there? Well, I don't know. For sure, John's got the mustache one. I don't know about the beard. I'm the baby of the group, Joe. Okay. Okay, let me show you John. John's got a little blue ink on his fingers. I was, I was writing a letter and I broke my pen. Does it show up in living color? Now open your hand up again. Yeah, it sure does. How about that? Well, you can see we're pretty happy. You can see we're pretty happy about this whole business. Roger that. Sure looks good to see you again. Roger that. Sure looks good to see you again. Oh. Well, you do look. We got your message on the blue dye, John. All right, you got to watch when you ride a lot with blue pins. And we're going to take you back outside now and show you the moon as we see it, over. And we have a view from 3,000 miles. So the moon is starting to lose its, uh, its spherical shape. Uh, it's becoming oblong now with the uh, Terminator, with us moving around uh, into the area of the Terminator. Roger, we're, we're showing that on our screens down here. You know, looking at the Earth Terminator and the Moon Terminator is the only way we can figure out which is up and which is down. And sometimes they don't agree. Right. So for the, you people that uh, aren't in the space life business, I say it sure is fantastic and you really ought to try it. Thank you, John. I hope to someday. Apollo 10, it appears that the two... Uh, Roger, Joe. Houston, it appears that the tube is starting to saturate when I go to, uh, to full zoom. I've been just gathering in too much light that's coming back normal from the sun's rays. Are you getting that on your screen, over? No, we're still getting a, a real good picture down here, Tom. Okay, I'll go back to uh, full zoom and just uh, hold it there for a little bit. I've always, uh, I've always believed 
and nothing is impossible, and now I'm convinced of it, and I hope that what we're doing here and what's going to go on in the future is going to be something that's going to be a betterment to all mankind. I'm convinced of that. Roger that. Houston, how does your picture look now? Are you saturated at all? Over. Roger. Right, we're starting to get saturated now, Tom. Okay, it appears to me when I go to the wide angle, not to, to zoom it, that it starts to, uh, to saturate a, a little bit. So I'll, I'll keep it down to lower uh, at this time. Roger, it's, it's a whole lot better now. Can you notice now, and now we can really start to notice near the horizon how rugged it is. And you see the little peak sticking up on it? Over. Roger, we can pick those out. Okay, Houston, the, the moon, is, as we move away and our, our velocity slows down, the moon uh, is uh, starting to uh, uh, grow less in diameter relative as far as our visual view. So what we'll do is terminate the TV now, and then we'll bring it back on in a little while after we can square it away here and show you a little bit better distance view. Over. Okay, my fine, Tom. Okay, and uh, this is Apollo 10 signing off for a while. We'll be back in about 30 or 40 minutes and see how it looks then. Over. Okay, Dan, this is Houston. Uh, we'd like to uh, dump the tape now, and we'd like to keep the high-gain antenna while we do that. Yes, sir. Okay. Will this attitude be okay, Joe? Roger, that'll be fine. At the conclusion of that television transmission, Apollo 10 was uh, about 3,390 nautical miles from the moon. Uh, the uh, trans-Earth injection maneuver, which started the spacecraft back to Earth, as you heard uh, early in the television transmission, uh, was very close to nominal. The uh, maneuver is targeted to bring Apollo 10 back to Earth at a ground elapsed time of 192 hours, 4 minutes, or just 4 minutes, uh, 8 days and 4 minutes after liftoff from Cape Kennedy. At the present time, the uh, spacecraft is traveling at a speed of 6,046 feet per second, and we show 3,436 nautical miles from the moon. There's no, no restraint on the thermal, thermal world. Okay, real fine. Thank you, Joe. Over. Okay, Ken, this is Houston. You can have the computer back now. Hey, your rest mat is in. We, we've had the computer for quite a while. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, I hope. We've been playing with it. <laughs> You're right. How are you, Tim? Go ahead, Tim. Uh, listen, we're we're flirting with 26 to 26 and a half volts up here, uh, pretty regularly right at the moment. Roger, we copy. We're gonna we're gonna see if we can bring it up a little bit. We're we're gonna see if we can bring it up a little bit. We got the uh, DC power off or the DC power rather, and a couple other things, and we'll watch it. But I just wanted to know that I want you to know we're looking at uh, a low low 26 and a half. All right, Roger, we copy. We'll look at it. And I guess we're up to about 27 now, so we're probably in pretty good shape. Okay, Ken, I'm going to turn you over to the Marines now. I'll see you a little later. Uh, Roger, Joe. Thanks a lot uh, for all the help there on Capcom. And, uh, Ford mission's real great. We'll see you back uh, in Houston probably next Tuesday. Over. Boy, Roger that. You're right in the groove. Thank you, Joseph. <laughs> Houston, Charlie Brown, you want me to put my uh, high pit rate below? 
Stand by one. Uh, affirmative Apollo 10, put your high bit rate to low. Okay. Uh, Apollo 10, Houston, uh, we're going to keep the configuration we've got until we get C-52 finished and the dump finished over. Copy, uh, 37, 37, 37, 55, 71, 66, 63, and uh, you can do your P-52 in the present attitude and go right from there to PTC, over. I just want you to make sure. 
Okay, John, that's uh, an option one confirmed. Roger. Uh, hello, Jack, I got some red rings. Go ahead with the red. Commander 6042, trip is 05311, and I'm 15043. Roger, copy 26042 05311 thank you. And negative on the, uh, on the pills today. Roger, copy. And the fans have been cycled. Roger. Uh, Apollo 10, Houston. Yeah, we're going through the regulator check at this time. Roger, we copy. Go ahead. Y yes, uh, we'd like to know, uh, did you turn the GDC off by going to ECA over? Roger, we turned it off and then uh, turned it back on here since we're going to do this uh, IMU uh, realign over. Uh, Roger, understand off and then on. Thank you. We just want to check again how much it increased our voltage and uh, after we get the uh, IMU completely torqued around, then I'm going to turn uh, the GDC ECA power to ECA over. Okay, Tom. I'm sure it's a startup transient, but I haven't start, I haven't tried it again, so uh recommend we just believe it did start up. Uh an evaporator, secondary evaporator has been working well. Do you uh should we delete that test or should we give it a try? Stand by one, we'll check. Uh, Apollo ten Houston, delete the secondary loop check over. Control. Something in the nature of a G whiz number at the time of the uh, trans Earth injection burn. Apollo 10 was some 211,373 miles away from Earth on the backside of the moon. The change of shift press, uh, press briefing is scheduled to begin momentarily in the main auditorium. Air to ground uh, Apollo 10. Transmissions will be picked up at the conclusion of the press conference and at 139 hours, 13 minutes ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. Hello Houston, I've got some onboard readouts for you. Okay, we got it now. Looks good. The terminator coming on there, it looks like the moon is lopsided. John is holding the camera on Maine and Gene is helping him focus on it. And uh, it's a beautiful view there. Over. Yeah, it really looks good from here, Tom. Okay, how's your color look on it now? Over. We're on the marker here, we're seeing a green and white moon. Well, green and white. Yeah, it's uh, green up near the Terminator and uh, white n near the uh, near the other limb. Uh, you must be talking about the cheesy part of it, huh? Yeah, I guess you guys must have done that to it. <laughs> well, you might say something like that. Okay, again, uh, just for correlation on the colors that we have, about the best area of that body that I can describe, it looks like a chocolate milkshake. That's about the best color of brown that I can describe. Over. 
All right, Roger, Tom, we copy. Move that camera a little bit to the right. Okay, then that's real good. That's real good now, Gene. And uh, Houston, Ted, how does your color look over? Uh, stand by one time. I don't know if we got true color in here. Okay. Our color is looking real good now, Tom. Okay. at the edge of the hatch window. Okay, uh, 
from Houston, this is Apollo 10. We've been up about 21 hours, nearly 22 hours, and, uh, and we think we'll go ahead and start set up for the sleep cycle and go ahead and start with the BTC attitude. And at this time, uh, we'll go ahead and turn the TV off, and this is Apollo 10 signing off for the TV. Uh, Roger, for Tom, uh, thanks a lot for the TV show. It's a little early right around here. This is Apollo Control, 139 hours, 53 minutes ground elapsed time. Apollo 10 is now 7,160 nautical miles outbound from the moon, traveling at a velocity of 5,524 feet per second. During the last uh, 15 or 20 minutes, there's been an accumulation of uh, about six minutes of air-to-ground transmissions during the time they change of shift press briefing was underway. We're prepared now to roll back, roll that tape uh, and listen to it, and uh, we'll rejoin the conversation live as it uh, continues. The crew is now powering down for the sleep period. Let's uh, listen to the tape that is accumulated. Uh, what it's doing, but it, at the moment is of no uh, 
Uh, it says I've been a turnover. Okay, thank you. Uh, Apollo 10, Houston, uh, we have a pre-sleep checklist here for you. A few items to turn off uh, when you're ready to copy over. Okay, Jack, uh, go, go ahead. Okay, your optics power switch off. Your SCS electronics to ECA. And uh, using Omni for PTC, go to Omni and Bravo. Your high gain antenna track manual. Portable water heater off. High gain antenna power off. Your rotational controller power direct both off. And uh, on your cryo tanks, we want all cryo fans off. And on the heaters reading on your switches from left to right, your H2 tank 1 heater off. Your H2 tank 2 heater auto. Your O2 tank 1 heater auto. And your H2 tank, you're correcting your O2 tank 2 heater off. Over. Okay, on the heaters, I got uh, one H2 is off, two H2 is auto, one O2 is auto, two O2 is off, and all my fans are off. That's right, you got it right. And let's see, you gave me road power, portable water heater, I gain uh, the manual power off will be an Omni PSPS electronic PCA and optic power off. Alright, you got them all. Going on the internet at this time. Roger.
This is Apollo Control, 141 hours, one minute. Ground elapsed time. The crew of Apollo 10 is apparently settled in for a long, well-deserved rest period after being up for approximately 22 hours. Had a very successful uh, trans-Earth injection burn, powered down the spacecraft, and are now in the uh, passive thermal control mode, the so-called barbecue mode of stabilizing spacecraft temperatures. They're now some 10,729 nautical miles outbound from the moon, coming back toward this speck of cosmic dust we call the Earth at some 5,328 feet per second. And the uh, situation is rather quiet here in the control room, looking at playback data from the uh, trans-Earth injection burn. And at 141 hours, two minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 142 hours, one minute, ground elapsed time. Apollo 10 crew is uh, apparently asleep at the time. We've had no communications from them within the last hour or so. Some numbers on distance. Earth reference uh, distance is now 198,243 nautical miles. Velocity uh, 4,780 feet per second. Flight surgeon just reported to the flight director that uh, Commander Tom Stafford is apparently in a rather deep sleep, according to the biomedical readouts. Some other numbers now on uh, the current predicted entry interface, 191 hours 48 minutes around elapsed time, with splash down about 14 minutes later at 192 hours 2 minutes, just 2 minutes over 8 days even. This would be uh, 11.51 central daylight time. These numbers likely will change as additional tracking is brought in and processed through the computers here in Mission Control Center. Major events today will be uh, include another television transmission at uh, 152 hours 35 minutes ground elapsed time. The accuracy of the trans-Earth injection burn was such that the first mid-course correction, mid-course correction burn number five, at TEI plus 15 hours is estimated to be only 2.6 feet per second. Here again, this may be allowed to accumulate uh, to a later mid-course correction scheduled time. At 142 hours, 3 minutes ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 143 hours, 1 minute ground elapsed time. Apollo 10 crew still sleeping soundly at this time. Spacecraft now uh, being tracked at 195,441 nautical miles from Earth and coming back at a velocity of uh, 4,768 feet per second, which will continue to decrease until the spacecraft reaches the so-called moon, uh, moon sphere of influence or actually back into the Earth sphere of influence, at which time it will begin to accelerate again. No other new information to report at this time. The wake-up uh, time will be 
probably around 1.30 this afternoon, Central Daylight Time. We're showing now an entry countdown clock of uh, 48 hours, 46 minutes, 43 seconds. However, this time does not show any mid-course correction maneuvers. If any mid-course corrections are made, uh, this time will be uh, changed somewhat. And at 143 hours, 2 minutes ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 144 hours, 1 minute ground elapsed time. Apollo 10 crew still asleep at this time with uh, some uh, four hours remaining of their sleep period. Spacecraft now 192,621 nautical miles from Earth, traveling at a velocity of 4,771 feet per second. Here in Mission Control, there's a sudden uh, increase of uh, the odor of delicatessen food pastrami, bagel, and so on. Assistant Flight Director Ed Findell has just brought in a great amount of food for flight controllers to have a midday snack. All quiet otherwise here in Mission Control. People uh, mainly uh, studying the data from the uh, trans-Earth injection burn. Still tracking through the Madrid station. A line projected from the center of the Earth out through the surface to the spacecraft puts the spacecraft approximately over Central Africa. And at 144 hours, 2 minutes ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 145 hours, 5 minutes, ground elapsed time. Apollo 10 crew still asleep at this time, some 2 hours, 50 minutes remaining in the crew sleep period, which has been extended about 2 hours longer than the nominal flight plan time. Distance now from Earth, 189,604 miles. Velocity, 4,784 feet per second. And at 145 hours, 6 minutes ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control. Let's join the conversation in progress. Uh, no, we haven't fired a thruster. The attitude's looking real good, and uh, we got a little traveling music if you'd like to listen. Go ahead. Over. Okay, stand by. Okay, Dan Houston, uh, how'd the traveling music come through? Uh, that was really great, uh, Jack. You'd be able to come up with some, <laughs> some real great uh, numbers there for us. We sure appreciate it. Over. Well, uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, since the other day, uh, you made a special request for the Marine Corps hymn. Well, everybody around here has been trying to get us to play that, but... Uh, I can't allow him to do that since uh, you'd have to stand up and uh, you guys have uh, said you don't know which way is up, so we can't play that one. <laughs> okay. Let us stay up, over. Hey, Jack, how come it takes us so much longer to train you to be a Capcom than Charlie and Bruce and Joe? What Chief's trying to say is that good Marine Corps training must have come through there, over. 
I hear you. Keep talking. Just get there, Hor. Well, uh, you may notice that your um, exhaust temperature and fuel cell, too, is uh, stabilized out, and uh, sure enough, it's been that way for the last few hours, so uh, looks like that's uh, no sweat. Um, your trajectory, uh, by the way, is right on. You're uh, laying right in the middle of the fairway there. At, uh, it's taking us, it's going to take us about 15 hours to predict the uncertainties uh, in your trajectory, as a matter of fact. So we're going to uh, skip mid-course five. And uh, we have a choice of making either mid-course six or seven. And uh, we're going to make mid-course six, I believe. And it'll only be uh, one and a half feet per second. Or. Uh, Roger, that just sounds beautiful. It looks like uh, that bird back of the moon, the guidance and the trajectory, everything, but it's right in the, um, you said, right down the alleyway or the fairway. Over. All right, oh, uh, you're going to uh, pass through the lunar sphere of influence at uh, 148.39. And uh, during the time you were sleeping, uh, you got to the point where uh, you stopped the decelerating and you're now accelerating. And you're uh, 187,300 miles out and you're about uh, 4,800 feet per second. Uh, Roger, 4,800 feet per second. We've got a beautiful view out here of both uh, the Earth and the Moon in our hatches, and say every half a rev we can see both of them for quite a while. And uh, when you get a high gain lock through Goldstone, we'll show up to you for just a couple of minutes. Over. Sure, we'd take, like to take a look at that. Uh, let's see if we can crank that up. Uh, Roger, I don't know if Goldstone uh, has contact. Yet. I'll leave that up to you. Over. Hey, Jack, I just uh, put battery. Charge uh, started about uh, two minutes ago. Okay, that was uh, one of the items in the flight plan update, and I uh, understand you've got uh, bad A charge on the line. Uh, got a little bit of advanced weather in the uh, landing area. The forecast for your landing time is 1,800 scattered, 10,000 broken, high broken. Winds 120 at 15. Five. These will be five feet, and there's scattered showers in that area, which means uh, less than 10% of the area has showers. Right now, there's a uh, stationary front sitting over that area, but it's uh, quite weak. And the uh, recovery forces this morning uh, conducted a simulation in the area. Then we've got some morning news here if you want to listen to it sometime. Hello, Houston, Apollo 10, over. Uh, Apollo 10, Houston, how do you read me now? Uh, Roger, Jack, read you loud and clear. I guess we switched antennas and uh, we lost Cobb uh, just about the time you said 1800 scattered, over. Oh, all right, we'll go through that again. Uh, your forecast weather for the landing area is 1,800 scattered, 10,000 broken, and high broken. The winds will be 120 at 15, five foot seas, and there's scattered showers in the area, which means, however, that it's, only, it's less than 10 percent of the areas get showers. And the uh, recovery uh, people were conducting a simulation in uh, your landing area this morning. The, there's a stationary uh, front in the landing area, however, it's uh, relatively weak, as you can tell from the weather. And uh, we'll uh, continue uh, updating you on the weather periodically. We also have uh, some morning news here if uh, you want to listen to it. All uh, right, Richard, go ahead. Okay, Apollo 10 morning newscast from uh, Manned Spacecraft Center Public Affairs Office. Everybody's really raving about your uh, latest television pictures. They say the television pictures of the moon beamed to Earth from Apollo 10 shortly after TEI are being described as the most spectacular of the mission. Because of the early morning schedule for much of the U.S., the transmission is being replayed at various hours throughout the day. However, the consensus of opinion here is the same as yours. Utterly fantastic. 
Aside from the Apollo 10 news, here is a summary of other news highlights and a look at sports. President Nixon took time off from his busy schedule to enjoy a band concert on the White House lawn yesterday with the Soviet Ambassador Dobrynin. Music was provided by the University of Minnesota Concert Band that had just returned from a concert tour of the Soviet Union. Dobrynin was so pleased with the concert that he suggested that the tuba player be named Secretary of State. Both Dobrynin and President Nixon were observed tapping their toes and clapping hands as the band played Minnesota Hats Off to Thee. Another historic voyage was scheduled to begin today from the coast of Morocco. Norwegian adventurer Thor Heyerdahl was scheduled to leave the North African coast for an ocean voyage to the Caribbean islands. Remember, he's the guy who had the uh, crewman aboard that had three wives, the last one costing the outrageous sum of 60 bucks. Anyway, Heyerdahl and his crew of six are sailing in an exact copy of an ancient Egyptian sailing vessel. The boat is made of papyrus reeds. The U.S. Senate is expected to give quick confirmation of Judge Warren Burger as the new Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Chief Justice Designate Burger is reported to be a law and order type judge. The city of Houston is without a symphony orchestra. Musicians rejected a three-year contract proposal yesterday. Andre Previn also conducted his last concert with the orchestra. Former Governor John Connolly told graduating students of the University of St. Thomas that despite the problems within the United States, our country is the greatest organized society this world has ever known. Connolly received an honorary doctorate at the school's commencement exercises. Here's a look at sports. The Astros shut out the New York Mets last night by a score of 7 to nothing. A crowd of almost 11,000 saw Tom Griffin pitch a five-hit shutout, striking out 13 batters. The Cubs' Ken Holtzman shut out San Diego 6 to nothing. And it was Philadelphia 6, Atlanta 2. The Cubs now lead their division by five games, while Houston is nine games out of first place in the Western Division of the National League. One of these days, Oklahoma will have a baseball team. The weather is good for time trials at the Indianapolis Speedway. Weather is good for time trials at the Indianapolis Speedway today. A.J. Foyt and Roger McCluskey are expected to battle it out for the pole position. In previous runs around the track, Foyt has done over 172 miles an hour and McCluskey over 170 miles per hour. Mario Andretti smashed into, into a wall yesterday and totaled his Lotus Ford, but was not seriously injured. He came back to drive a test lap in his backup car at the speed of 169 miles an hour. Foyt will try to win an unprecedented fourth Indy 500 race. Augie Erfurth is reported to have resigned his post as assistant athletic director at Rice University. Athletic director Bo, Ho Bo Hagen is expected to make the announcement today and appoint a successor to Erfurth. Pete Brown shot a 66 to take the halfway lead in the Atlantic Classic Golf Tournament. After 36 holes, Brown has a card of 135, and the big-name golfers are all down in the pack, three to six strokes off the pace. Boxer George Foreman has signed up a manager and will make his professional boxing debut in Madison Square Garden in June. The 1968 Olympic champ is, according to his new manager, Houston's first heavyweight champion of the world. The Dallas Cowboys yesterday announced that reserve quarterback Jerry Romey has been traded to the Cleveland Browns. In return, the Browns will get an undisclosed 1969 draft choice. The Cowboys will still have Don Meredith and Craig Morton, in addition to Roger Staubaugh, the former Navy great who joins the team this fall. And a final note, preparations are being made for a hero's welcome for the Apollo 10 crew at Pago Pago. Governor Owen Aspinall says he will personally supervise the wel welcoming. Over. Uh, Roger, uh, Houston, uh, that's a, <laughs> quite a bit of news. Uh, you tell the governor down at Pago Pago, I appreciate it, but he doesn't have to go any special effort, over. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd, 
I didn't read the last sentence here. It said uh, maybe there will be dancing girls there, but uh, now you know. And uh, by the way, the unemployed local philosopher now says that. Uh, oh, well, if he wants to go to this place, we yeah, I thought you might change your mind. By the way, the uh, unemployed local philosopher now says that uh, due to your efforts, color television is now on its way back. So we have to give our best to the uh, unemployed philosopher there. But that uh, total situation down in Samoa sounds like. Uh, it's what, is that going to be a top hat or a top of the type of fare, over? Oh, just come as you are, Tom. Hey. Okay. Hey, Jack, you got our astrocast today? Uh, stand by. We'll see if we can get them. And Apollo 10 Houston, uh... Looks like your uh, TV lines uh, would, will be ready from Goldstone at uh, 146, 47. 40 more minutes. into the microphone and didn't catch that. Apollo 10, Houston, how do you read? Uh, Roger, Houston, read you loud and clear, over. Okay, I hear you the same. Uh, the uh, afternoon uh, television program has slipped to 147 hours. And uh, if you want okay. some uh, TV attitudes and high gain angles uh, for uh, subsequent television programs, well, I've got them here. Hey, Roger, Jack, uh, actually, this PTC attitude we're in now, just if we can pan it when we slowly rotate, we can, in a period of time, uh, we can get both the Earth and the uh, Moon in right in this attitude while we're still in PTC. But I don't know whether you can get a high game lock over. Okay, 10, Houston. Uh, looks like uh, you could probably uh, give us TV in the PTC mode uh, with your high gain at the pitch plus 30 and yaw 270. Over. Roger. Pitch plus 30 and uh, yaw plus 270. Uh, Roger, in fact, uh, why don't we go ahead and just we'll make a try early and see that if we can maintain high gain lock over. Roger. And we'll do that later on. We're watching our voltages now. Uh, Houston, uh, is Deke around there? Over. Uh, negative, uh, Tom. He was in here uh, earlier and uh, he'll be back. Wait a second. 
Mike, uh, the up-to-date readings, uh, as of right now, if you want them, I'll give them to you. Go ahead. Okay, Commander, it's 26043. The camp is 05043. And the limp is 15044. And uh, the last two or three readings on that camp, uh, it's my fault, but they've been wrong. I just copied them wrong. But the incremental increase that you've seen on my uh, uh, rad meter is typical of the uh, increase of the other two right along. Roger, copy. Thank you. In Apollo 10 Houston, we'd like you to verify a switch. Please verify a black collie of that temp in switch in the auto position. Over. No, Jack, it's, it's in manual. Black call of that temp in is in manual. Okay, Gene, let's put the black collie of that temp in and in, in, correction in auto. Over. Okay, it's in auto. Uh, I'm not sure when it went to manual, though. Uh, Roger, our data shows that it uh, was probably in manual, and uh, you just verified that uh, it should be in auto unless you've got a reason. Otherwise, uh, let us know. No, sir, Jack. Uh, it should have been in auto. I guess maybe uh, I hit it accidentally or something. I don't know. Apollo 10, Houston, uh, when you have uh, window number five looking at the moon, then your uh, high, gain entangle, high gain antenna angles will be pitch minus 62, yaw 266. Over. Okay, well, we got window five it'll be pitch minus 62 and yaw 266. Right, thank you, Jack. And by the way, Gene, your astrocast uh, from your uh, friendly communicator here says discussion fills much of the morning, and you'll learn a great deal that would never have come to your attention. That is, if you listen well. That's right. I was going to have a briefing for him on, on the stars and planets today. Yeah, and by the way, John, yours is keep your attentions focused on your own affairs this Saturday. The necessary chores are quite enough for the time being and leave all the frills for another time and place. Over. tend to get out of hand and logic is not quite enough there's nothing to do but write it out with a certain amount of leniency sounds like the boss Houston, if you want to uh, acquire on the high gain a little early, you could go to uh, pitch plus 30 and yaw 270 right now. Over. Pitch plus 30 and yaw 270. We'll, we'll wait a second, Jack. Uh, we're getting some cow here. Uh, Houston, I just want to give you an informal report on the star visibility up here in the PTC rest map. Roger, go ahead. With the with the sun with the sun the, with the sun the moon and the earth uh, light shafting even with that uh, we're able to uh, and we're pointed up to the north constellations and so we're looking at it uh, about to an angle of 35 degrees to the ecliptic pointed up we can, was able to recognize uh, uh, the big bear and the big lion and uh, of course Jupiter Arcturus Alpaca. And even old Raffle Hog and uh, the Navigator's Triangle. And uh, from then on, due to the sun, things sort of get washed out. And they get washed out 
Houston, I have a uh, consumables update and a flight plan update when you're ready. Oh, you've been to 10, I'll hear you, over. Oh, 10, reading you loud and clear. Okay, consumables at 147 hours. RCS total 56%. 46, 63, 56, 5 niner. That's 18% uh, above the flight plan. H2 totals 24.5, O2, 336. Over. Flight plan update at uh, 151 plus 30. Delete all reference to mid course correction 5. And at 152 hours, we want to watch a wastewater dump. Okay, uh, when you're in the PPC mode, 
At a roll angle of uh, 335 degrees, your left hand window will be pointing at the Earth. At a roll of 065, your right hand window will be pointing at the Moon. At a roll degree angle of uh, 318 degrees, you should be able to get locked with a pitch of plus 44 and a yaw of 272. Hold it, Jack. Uh, okay, hold it, Jack. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Go. Hit me again with all that, a little slower. Okay, when your roll angle reaches 318 degrees, your high gain antenna pitch should be plus 44, and your yaw should be 272. Over. Okay, you say uh, when our roll is 335, we ought to have the left hand, the earth out the left hand window, and the way it's 065, we ought to have the moon out the right hand window. That's affirmative. And, and when our roll is 318, uh, the pitch for high gain is plus 44 and yaw 272. You want me to set this high gain on a re in a react mode? That's affirmative, Gene. Uh, once you acquire a lock, let's go react. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll try to acquire it just next time around. Hey, Jack, uh, what, are, what are my react angles going to be? Uh, or you want me to just read them off the meter and set them up when we lose the lock? Apollo 10, Houston, and high gain angles. Set them up at uh, pitch plus 30 and yaw 270. And uh, when she, then she'll roll in and then lock in the earth. Over. Jack, I've been reading it all, but we've got high gain lock now. So uh, my question was, uh, what's my react angle? Okay, Gino, they're uh, plus 30 and 270. Over. Plus 30 and 270, thank you. And uh, we've got high gain lock. Okay, great, Jack. Apollo 10, Houston, uh, we're ready with a P-27 update when we can have the computer. Over. Roger, thank you. Uh, Apollo 10, Houston, uh, we're finished with your computer. You can block. Roger. This is Apollo Control at 146 hours, 50 minutes. Flight Director Glenn Lenny and the black team now in the control center relieving Flight Director Pete Frank and the orange team. Apollo 10, 184,640 miles from Earth. Velocity 4,820 feet per second. <laughs> 